You have the habit of looking at your statement. Find out. Wow, for every download that's in the U.S., this is how much they take. For every, I do it with my PayPal account. I can tell you it's you know on certain things. This is how much U.S. This is how much international. I like PayPal because people trust PayPal, so I'm willing to pay that fee for things that people trust. TubeCore has relationships with iTunes and Amazon that I don't have, so I'm willing to pay a little extra for those relationships. You know. Uh, I've seen TuneCore and Orchard get songs up faster than a lot of major labels. You know, that's the business they're in, is to work real fast on your behalf. So I would definitely, also too, by the way, if nobody goes to TuneCore, they have a great blog with like some really cool information. And, and I get a lot of my stuff from them uh, because they're written by a lot of guest speakers and things like that. And then if you read an article that you like, click to follow that person and they'll send you great knowledge every single day at no cost to you most of the time. Dave. Yeah, there, there's a lot of companies like that. You just gotta find which one's right for you. You know, like disc made, there's hundreds of places that'll do discs for you. There's there's all kinds of different things. You know, it's like if you're gonna have a lot of music over in Europe, find a company that specializes in that. Definitely, if you can't collect it in the U.S., you're gonna have a real hard time collecting it in Europe. So do research, ask questions. And that's what they're there for. Part of their service is to answer your questions. So make make sure that they're earning their pennies, you know, that they're getting. But don't be afraid, once again, don't be afraid to ask a question just because you don't understand it. That's the reason to ask the question. A lot of people in this business don't ask questions because they don't want to think that somebody thinks they don't know anything. It's expensive not asking. Okay, I read Donald Passman's book just to learn enough of the lingo to just BS my way through conversations until I could get enough time to get to somebody who knew. You know, oh, yeah, you know, I'm all about that. Yeah, okay, great, I'll get back to you tomorrow. And then you get on the phone, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, that's like I always tell people. If somebody says they have to have a decision right now, it's not legit. If they can't wait 24 hours for you to get back to your investor or whatever, it's not a real situation. Run from it. No blood to like the blade. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I've heard people say that like, the best Are you from Minnesota? I am. Oh. Yeah. Um, the best way to kind of get into artistry is to do songwriting, get your foot in the door, and then you'll get kind of noticed. Is that accurate? Like Notice for, I always tell people, if you want to be famous or get noticed, do a sex tape. <laughs> It'll go viral and you might get a fragrance. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it all, it's all different for everybody. I mean, it really is. It's like there's a lot of people get noticed for the wrong reasons. Uh, one of the, the biggest things that I can advise people is don't, don't get yourself seen too soon by a decision maker. Because what happens is, you know, Scott Borchetta and I were speaking on a panel, and one of the girls asked him, they said, why can't we get to you? You know, why do you have so many gatekeepers? He said, trust me, the gatekeepers are there to protect you. Because most people cut a song and want to come in and play it for me, he says, when you walk into my door, you're telling me I can compete with Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Rascal Flatts, Tim McGraw, and most of you can't. So he says, it doesn't matter. You know, everybody always comes to me, hey, would you listen to my song and tell me what you think? And I always go, you know, honestly, it really doesn't matter what I think unless I'm the guy writing the check to sign you. You know, I don't want to give you false hopes where you run around town and go, oh my gosh, I'm going to be famous. Rick thinks I'm great. It really doesn't matter what Rick thinks as I may want to pat myself on the back and go, well, I think that's great. It, it really, so every situation's different. What do you like to do? Sing, write, both. both? Keep doing both. Keep doing both. That, that comes up to another point. I had somebody ask me the other day, they said, hey, we got this investor and we're gonna cut three songs and we're gonna go let a woman tell us where my voice will fit, whether it be rock or pop or country. I said, that's a bunch of crap. I said. Why don't you go find out what fans of other artists are drawn to the music that you're putting out there? You know, it's like, hey, these people like me. Go to their Facebook page. You'll see the other music that they like. If, Ka if Cassidy Pope would have taken that theory, she was a rocker chick who fronted a band, who went out and found out she sold more music doing great country songs with her vocal style. Now she's signed to Republic Nashville. She's already sold a million downloads, people, and she has... That's the smartest thing, is Blake said, dude, I like your voice, and I think it would go great with this song. And it really worked for her. But had they said, well, shit, she was the front person of a rock band. We have to send her to the Republic Rock Division. They'd be like the other two voice winners that we still don't know who they are and where they are or what they've done. 
And if you haven't learned about the TV shows yet, the only people famous from The Voice are the judges. All their careers are doing fantastic right now. You haven't heard a lot of the other people. You know, I went with one of my artists, we were at The X Factor. They had you get three songs prepared to do at The X Factor. When we got there, they shot video and stories on us for eight hours. We kept asking, hey, do we know what song we're going to sing yet? Hey, do we know what song we're going to sing? Oh, we'll get there, we'll get there. 35 minutes before she was supposed to go on stage, they told her what song she was supposed to sing. Paul Abdul was at a panel. She said, I tell everybody, rule number one, it's a TV show. Rule number two, it's a TV show. Rule number three, oh yeah, you might sing. It's all about what that is. So you need to go find out if there's an audience for what you're selling. That's the best advice that I can give anyone is get it out there and see who's digging it besides your parents. Uh, <laughs> that could be very dangerous too. Uh, but get your music out there. Really figure out who the audience is that's going after it. Find out if that fits within your brand. As most of you know with what I teach is it always starts with branding. Most people will record a record and go right to the sell part. You know, it's like, hey, I got this great record. And then they wonder why nobody buys it. I do brand. Who are you? Does the music and everything that you do blend with the brand that you've created for yourself? Then we go build the audience. I have all these great widgets in order to collect data. But once you get the data, that's where it gets important. That's when you've really got to start working this project right. That's the cultivating part, the nurturing the data and building that relationship. And then you go to the sell. Those are the four pillars of my house. Brand, build, cultivate, and sell. If you mix that up in any order, it might, I, I can't necessarily say how it's going to work. And I always talk to people, and I use Justin Bieber and Taylor as a really good example. They went out and built their brand. Justin Bieber gave those kids those same YouTube cover songs every single week, consistently. Then when he got to go out on radio tour, because he communicated with these folks, he could say, hey, I'm going to be at Kiss FM at 12 noon. I get done at 12.30. Why don't you meet me outside? I'd love to say hello to you. The next thing you know, he walks out of the radio station, which has never played his music, and there's 3,000 screaming little girls. He must be something big. He must be a big deal. We did the same thing with Taylor. So they kept giving him. So he just kept giving and giving and giving. So how is it that this kid could sign his record deal and one year later sell out Madison Square Garden? He never lost contact with those fans. He had ways to communicate with them. You know, there's a lot of bands in town, and it's sad. They'll get every opportunity to be on every major tour. They'll get the radio station to play the songs. They'll do all these things. And then all of a sudden, on sale day comes, and they're like, oh, my God, we only sold 9,000 records. That's because they're involved in what I like to call the push and pray method. They push it out and pray to God somebody finds it. I prefer to do the pull and stay, pull these people in and stay engaged. And it's real easy now to stay engaged without having to give people all of your time if you're taught properly. And that's what I try to explain to folks sometimes. It takes the same amount of time to do it wrong as it does to do it right. So why not learn to do it right the first time? Well, because everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to get discovered. Don't discover people. You discover cures for diseases and planets. But uh, that's just the way I look at it is stop trying to be discovered. Focus more time on trying to build that fan base Build your audience, nurture that audience, because the true fan is worth $118. Is that still the number that they say? Because in your figure, a thousand fans would make you the six-figure musician. Yeah, that, that's about super, super fans and engaging them. Yep. And keeps going back and also doing um, recurring income. Yeah, and there's ways that you can build these things. I mean, like I said, don't be afraid to ask your fans. You know, a lot of them are willing to go out and do a lot of this work for you. Uh, one time we were sitting there, we were all pissed off because we put up a cover video and everybody liked it. And I'm like, I need you to share it. <laughs> I don't need more likes. I need more shares. You know, how are we going to do this? So we said, the first 10 people, the next 10 people that share this video will send you an MP3 of the song. And 85 people in the next two minutes shared this video. And I'm like, holy shit, we just forgot to ask. You know, we just kind of put our stuff out there and expect that people are just going to do with it what we hope that they're going to do with it. But if you build the relationships right, you can tell these fans what you want them to do with it. Questions, directions you want me to go in? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 